If you were searching on the internet and you're watching this video, then the probability is that you were searching on the internet because you had a listing agreement, probably a six month contract to sell your house and it did not sell. And there's also a great possibility that you did not get any offers for the home or the ones that you got were extremely low seemingly. So the question is what happened? Because you probably saw houses around you selling for what seemed to be top dollar. And you certainly feel like your house was just as nice as theirs, if not nicer. So where did things go wrong? Why did their house sell and yours did not? Well, today I'm going to give you the answer to that exact thing. And I'm going to give you the solution. Now, this is certainly by no means the only reason that your house may not have sold, but this is definitely the number one reason why houses have trouble selling. And the reason is because it was overpriced in relation to its current market. And we've seen homes in these situations sit on the market for six months and not receive any offers at all or receive offers that are significantly lower than the listing price. So if this sounds familiar to you, then I'm going to tell you what went wrong and I'm going to give you some numbers to consider. And then I'm going to give you a strategy that you can implement to evaluate before getting into your next listing agreement with your next listing agent. So to successfully do this, let's look at some numbers and percentages and let's look at valuation. So let's say that you have a home that is accurately valued at $600,000 in the current market. If you enter into a listing agreement with an agent who places a valuation on your home that sets it at a list price of just 12 and a half percent over its actual market value in the current market climate, then your house is going to be $675,000. That's $75,000 higher than the actual value of your home. So what do you think is going to happen when a buyer's agent and their client come and tour your home and then they sit down to discuss a potential offer and they look at this listing price knowing that they are going to want to negotiate on behalf of their buyer clients the best possible deal at the best possible value for the home that they're purchasing. And at this price point, these are the premier agents in your market. And they're going to look at this number and they're going to quickly come to the conclusion that this house is about $75,000 overpriced. They're going to do one of two things. They're either a going to advise their clients not to put an offer in at all because the offer they're going to recommend is going to be offensive to you, the seller. And so you're not even going to consider it or B they are going to advise them to put an offer in this closer to the actual valuation of the home, which is going to be significantly lower. And so if you're watching this video, then this may sound familiar because if you've gotten any offers at all over the last six months or the six months that your house was listed, then they probably did seem extremely low in comparison to your list price. And you probably were offended by the number. So what's really going on behind the scenes? Cause what we're doing today is talking about data and numbers. We're talking about facts. We're not talking about feelings and emotions and ideals. And what's going on is quite simple. You have multiple agents in your market. You're working with one of them who has listed your home, but there's other agents that are involved in the potential of a transaction of the sale of your house and they're representing buyers. And each one of these agents is going to have a little differential in how they value your home. Now, in all reality, somebody's right and somebody's wrong. The first clue that you have to understanding the true value of your home is the fact that it's been sitting on the market for months and you've gotten no offers at all or any that were even remotely close to your listing price. There's your first clue. So I'm going to make a suggestion to you and I'm going to tell you what I would like to do entering into a listing agreement with a prospective client to sell their home. Then I'm going to tell you a simple process that I would suggest would be absolutely worth your while if you're selling your home that you can implement to avoid this happening to you. In the scenario that we looked at, the house that's properly valued at $600,000 in the current market climate that it's sitting was priced at $675,000. That's a 12 and a half percent increase in the price of the home compared to its actual value. This is a problem. Now I've heard it said that you want to be within 5% of the actual value of the home for your listing price. Me personally, I like to shoot for three and a half percent. And what I'm saying is the closer that you can get to the actual value in your listing price while still maxing out the potential of what's a realistic offer and price for your home in the market that it is sitting in. I keep saying that for a reason. I believe that that actually motivates buying agents to look favorably on the number that you've set and to have a better condition mentally moving into a, de a potential deal with you and making an offer. And that will inflect in the suggestion that they make to their buyer client actually resulting in a slightly higher number statistically across the board in terms of offers that are presented. Now that is purely a philosophy that I have based on human psychology, 
but I think it makes sense and I think it's accurate. And to sum it up in a nutshell, in layman's terms, what I'm saying is the higher that your list price gets away from the actual value of the home, the more offense, you can substitute a different word if you like, buying agents that come into your home take or buyers take in relation to the price that you have set and the response they have because they still want to buy your home is they send in actually an even lower offer than they would have if they would have felt good about the price that you had to begin with. So I've heard it said that 5% is the magic number and that you want to be within 5% of the actual valuation of the home in your list price. I'm saying that I want to shave that down to three and a half percent. I want to be able to accurately place a valuation on your home according to the market that it's in. And then I want to set that list price within three and a half percent above whatever that specific valuation is. I believe that that's going to position us to field a lot of offers. And I believe that three and a half percent is a reasonable number that we can expect to actually get our asking price for the house. So we'll call it three and a half to five percent. In the scenario we looked at, the listing agent has the client's house listed 12 and a half percent over its value. Now, why did this happen? This is why I kept mentioning the current market climate. Actual valuation of your home and my home fluctuates over time. And the real estate market is cyclical in nature. So if an agent came in and gave you a valuation on your home, but he was pricing your home based on what the market was five months ago, six months ago, seven months ago, or if they are trying to be predictive of the near future, but they're not correct in their assessment of that, then what's gonna happen is they're gonna value the home wrong. Now there could be a lot of factors involved in that also, but there is a world where that $600,000 home in terms of its current value could have a current value of $675,000 in a different climate. And that's not unreasonable. But if the listing agent has misread that climate, misread the circumstances that we are in now in terms of the market, then the result is going to be your home is going to be egregiously overpriced and it's not going to move. Now, what's the proof that what I'm saying is accurate? Because you may say, man, how do you know what you're talking about? How can you say this is true? Well, let's run the test. Forget feelings and emotions. Let's look at the data. Did you have your home listed for six months or has your home been listed for four or five months, whatever the case may be? And are there homes around you that are moving competitively that seem comparable to yours, perhaps even in your same neighborhood? And if the answer is yes to those things, have you or did you receive any offers for your home? Some of you have already said no. And to the ones that say yes, were the offers that you received within a decent range of the home? Let's do it this way. Let's, let's really put this to the test. Were the offers that you received within seven and a half percent of what you were asking? Because that would take us down to 5%, which would be the high end of that threshold that we're looking at that we want to be within. If the answer is no, then your experience in terms of the data tells you that what I'm telling you is the truth. Okay, so perhaps your listing agreement has expired and now you're going to look to move into a new listing agreement with a new agent or maybe the same agent and try this again. Or perhaps your house is still on the market and you're trying to assess how you can call an audible in the middle of the play and get this thing sold for the correct value. If you are the latter, then I would suggest that you look at these numbers, you sit down with your agent and you guys talk about them and see what makes sense and what doesn't. If you're not under contract and you're looking to list your home again and put it back on the market, either with the same agent or a new agent, let me tell you some advice of how you can avoid this kind of thing happening to you in the future. Here's what you should do. You need to ask for a free home valuation from four to eight agents in your market. Listing agents will do this for free. They're glad to do it. Realtors are paid a commission-based salary. They are going to make time to fit their time to schedule with you to get this done. Now, if you go up to eight, that can be a little bit involved. Four isn't the greatest sample size. I personally would prefer the number six, but anything in that range will be good if you've got the time for eight. I would say at least make the time for four to six because you're about to make one of the few largest transactions in your life that you're ever gonna make. How many times are you buying or selling a home or a commercial piece of property for that matter? The answer for most of us is going to be not many. So it's worth taking the time to do this and run this test. 
So for this hypothetical, let's stick with my favorite number for this test and let's go with six agents. So you're going to call or email six agents and you're gonna request a free home valuation because you're gonna to look to put your home on the market. So six agents, we're gonna bring them into our home, ideally, and we're gonna have them give us a valuation. Here's what you're probably gonna find. There's gonna be a range. There's gonna be a bit of variation in the suggested list prices that you're gonna receive. So for this hypothetical, let's say that you have three that are on the high side and three on the low side. Let's use the same house with the same numbers that we were looking at in our previous hypothetical. And let's say that you have six agents that give you a valuation on your home. Three of them come in on the higher side. One's 685, one's 675, one's 660. The other three come in on the lower side. You have a 615, a 620, and a 635. Here's what I'm going to suggest to you. You need to be taking away from that test and it requires you being honest with yourself. The likelihood, the likelihood is that the three agents that gave you the number of 635 and below are closer in their evaluation of the actual value of your home. That's the reality of the matter. That's probably not what you want to hear, but it's most likely the truth. And remember that if your house is truly valued at 600,000, then all three of those numbers are gonna put you right around that 5% number or lower. So I'm gonna to suggest to you that you should narrow your search down immediately, first of all, to those three agents. Because if you go with the other three, then you're probably setting yourself up to very possibly run into this problem and in three months, you're knocking the price down in your house. You're doing a price reduction of 10, 15, 20, $25,000 and possibly not selling the home at all and getting any offers at all. And you've already been through this or you're going through it. So you don't want to do that again. Now there is one caveat. It's possible that the agents or maybe it's one agent comes in significantly higher and they have some real great bead on where the market is about to go. Is that possible? Yes, but is that the likelihood of what's going on? No. And so this requires us being honest with how we're evaluating the data that we're receiving. If you take four to eight agents and you get a valuation from all of them, you're going to have a great sample size of numbers of prices to look at. And that gives you something that you can actually filter and start to be honest about where you really sit in the market that you're in and what's gonna position you to get your home sold for its top dollar currently. And currently is the key word because it can change, but many of you need to get your home sold. You want to sell the home. You don't want it to sit on the market for six months and pay for insurance, taxes, and landscaping only to find out that you didn't get any offers and have to go right back into this. You'd rather just sell the home. And if you knew for a fact for certain that the home is really worth thirty-five dollars to $45,000 less than what some agents are telling you that it's worth, then you really would not like it, but you're going to sell the home anyways because you're gonna be honest and say, this is what it's worth. I can't argue with the data. So this is my suggestion to you. I suggest you run this test before listing your home on the market, period. Some of you have friends and family members that are realtors and you're close with them and so you're gonna hire them no matter what. You still should run this test, honestly, just to keep everything honest and in check. There's no, there's no problem in that. Nobody should get offended by that. I mean, shoot, if you're gonna hire me anyways, then I'm not gonna get offended by it. Go ahead and get some other numbers. Let's compare them and see. Maybe I'm off. Maybe I need some good information to change my thinking a little bit. So I would suggest that running this test long before you even sign anything or put your house on the market with a particular agent is going to position you to have success in the selling process of your home and making it as seamless as possible. It's just a good idea. So again, to recap, we've seen homes that were valued upwards of 15% higher than their actual value considering the current market that we're in in our area. And we've seen homes sit and the listings expire, beautiful homes, perfect homes in great neighborhoods where other homes are selling expire because they were overpriced to this degree. We'd like to get that number down to 5%. I'd even like to get it down to 3.5% because I have a belief that that's actually gonna yield even better results. And so if anything in this situation sounds familiar to you, then I hope that you find this content helpful. If you do, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel for future content, of course, as we plan to drop a lot of material, you know, in the coming months and years, God willing. And in the meantime, if you're getting ready to list your home, no matter where you are in the country, please run this test. We always wanna get second opinions. The valuations are free. The realtors are gonna bend and work with your schedule to do it because they want to get your business. 
get four to eight valuations on your home so that you have a good data pool to analyze. Six is probably the perfect number. And you're probably gonna get three over here and three over here or some variation that way. There's probably gonna be outliers. And then you can start to process your data from there. Be honest with yourself and then start to have your next conversations as you start to dwindle down the agents that you potentially wanna work with. I think that you're gonna find this very helpful and I think that doing this is gonna position you to have the best potential of success in the sale of your home and to actually make the top dollar because that's what we want. You know, putting the house 13% over its value, we, the data shows doesn't typically yield making top dollar. What it yields is you losing six months of taxes, insurance, and landscaping for curb appeal. That's what it yields. So that's not the route that we want to take. We want to narrow that number down, get the correct listing price for the correct market conditions, and get the home sold. That's how we make the top dollar. And I think that following this formula will help you to get there. If you're in the state of South Carolina and you would like a free valuation on your home, feel free to give me a call or an email. My contact information is down in the description of this video. I would have no problem at all playing a role in this formula for you to help you get your home sold for the right price. So again, my contact information is down in the description of this video, but whether you're in our area or another market in South Carolina, there's plenty of qualified and great agents around. So I wish you guys all the best in getting your home sold. And in the meantime, y'all take care and we'll see you soon.